Hi everyone, I am Jaisara from the School of Computer Engineering, Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology. And in this lecture series, I am going to introduce you to the data communication and networking course. This course mainly focuses on the theoretical approach to understand how a computer network functions and what factors contribute to its efficiency and also how to overcome the inherent limitations. So let us get started. So friends, you must be wondering who should be taking up this course and why should you be taking up this course? Let me tell you, this course is intended for the ones who are the undergraduate students, also the ones who are preparing for the job interview, also the ones who are preparing for the network examinations such as CCNA and also the ones who are preparing the CAD examinations. Now, let me tell you the outcome of this course. Upon successful completion of this course, one will be able to understand how data is transformed while moving through the network and also you'll be able to understand the different technologies used to improve the efficiency of the communication. Again, you will be able to understand how to preserve the integrity of a data communication. Then you will be able to identify the different network designs and finally you will be able to understand the World Wide Web and the electronic mail technologies. In this lecture, we will cover five main topics to understand the data communication system. We start with the basics of communication system, the various components of a data communication system, followed by the data flow, means the concept of simplex, half duplex, full duplex communication, and the types of connection, and also the network protocols. So let's start with the first topic and let us understand what is a communication system. The fundamental purpose of a communication system is the exchange of data between two communicable devices. So to make the communication possible, the devices need to be connected through some form of transmission medium such as a wired cable. For a data communication to occur, the communicating device must be a part of communication system made up of a combination of a hardware and a software. The effectiveness of a data communication system depends on four fundamental characteristics that is delivery, accuracy, timeliness and jitter. So delivery means the data must be delivered to the correct destination. Let us take an example. In our case, if A is intending to send some data to B, then the data must be delivered to B. Delivering it to C is something which A wouldn't be expecting. Accuracy is a major concern, means the data which is to be delivered must be delivered accurately. In our case, if A wants to send some data to B and the data is altered, it is again not acceptable by A. Timeliness means the data must be delivered in a timely manner. Data which are delivered late are useless. In the case of and uh, real-time transmission, for example, audio-video data transfer, the data must be delivered in the order it is being produced. Now let us understand jitter. Do you remember experiencing audio distortion and blurry images while streaming audio videos? One of the pitfalls in digital media transmission is jitter. If the digits are lost, the reproduction must be perfect and at the receiver side, it must be delivered in the order it was lost. Now, let us switch over to the second topic, which is components of a data communication system. A data communication system has majorly five components, message, sender, receiver, transmission medium, and protocols. The sender is a device that sends the data message and the receiver is the device that receives the data message. And both these devices are connected through a transmission medium, which is the physical path by which a message travels from a sender to receiver. And both these devices upon an agreement follow a set of rules that governs a data communication, which is also known as protocols. Now let us understand the data flow. In a data communication system, there are three types of transmission mode. One is simplex, half duplex and full duplex. In simplex mode, the communication is unidirectional and only one of the two devices on the link can transmit, the other can only receive. For simplex mode, we can take an example of a television, a radio or a wireless microphone. In case of a television, it only receives the signals to display the output. Now, in a half duplex communication, both the sender and receiver can send and receive signal, but 
they must wait for their turn a walkie talkie can be taken as an example for a half duplex communication where one must use over to indicate the end of the transmission and ensure that only one party transmits at a time whereas a full duplex communication is a two way communication where signals travel in both the directions simultaneously one common example for a full duplex communication is the telephone network when two people are communicating by a telephone line both can talk and listen at the same time now let us discuss about the fourth topic that is types of connections in the network there are basically two types of connections one is point to point and the other is multi point in a multi point connection more than two specific devices share a single link and in a point to point a dedicated link is provided between two devices now let us discuss about the network protocols network protocols are a set of rules which governs the exchange of information between the devices now who defines and publishes network protocols the following groups have defined and published the different network protocols the following is the list of network protocols categorized under communication network management and security in the future lectures we will be studying in detail about the point to point and multi point connection and these protocols so friends here's a cool fact about today's lecture internet was invented 40 years ago and today it consists of 5 billion computing devices such as computers phones modems switches routers and etc so friends i hope i was able to make you grab the objectives of today's lecture please go through the summary of today's lecture also you may like to follow the below reference book to go through in detail